Welcome back, everyone, to the San Francisco Open, brought to you by Parse Productions, the Disc Golf Pro Tour, and the PDGA, presented by Absolute Extracts and Innova Champion Discs. We're here on the back nine with the final round, round three, with the lead card of FPO on the Glen Eagles Golf Course out in downtown San Francisco. Right now, we have Katrina Allen leading the pack out in front by four, followed by Paige Pierce at minus nine, Paige Bjerkis at even, and Madison Walker at one down. You know, it's pretty cool to pop up in the middle of San Francisco, buildings everywhere, and then you pull up on this course and you can see the bay from it. It's amazing. It's beautiful. As is this par five. Looking at 965 feet. It's a control distance shot off the tee, power shot possibly, and then it's an extreme distance shot on the next shot, and then a short approach to get the birdie. Here I'm talking about Bio Defender. I'm trying to bite off a little bit too much, and I hit a tree on the right side, but it actually kicks me kind of in the center of the fairway, actually. Lucky break that I will happily take. Madison throwing her whole body into that one. Yes, she did. And this is her star wraith again. This is an unreleased signature disc for her, so you know she has confidence in it. And as you can see, she puts it way down the fairway. Cat looking to match this shot. Flat, slight turn. And glide for days. This D2 is way down the fairway. She's going to like this. Paige Birkus up last, and she is lining up a big shot, nice and wide, and Heiser release with her Ballista Pro. Relatively standard tee shot here. One of the easier holes on the course. I think a lot of players have access to the birdie and even possibly an eagle for a few. Yeah, and that's what I'm kind of thinking right now. It's like I need crazy stuff to happen. I grab my BioFute. Uh, I'm sorry, my gold line Ballista Pro, and with this tailwind, I treat it like a distance shot. Just turn it over really hard with an overstable driver. And through that gap. Yeah, it finds with the, that inside Heiser the circle. Angle. Yeah, I get wow. down inside Especially the after an early tree kick. Right, and that's kind of what I was thinking. You know, I'm I'm first up on this approach. I gotta put it down there, and you know, maybe if I get it close enough. Katrina gets nervous and shorts her approach. Who knows? You know, the power of the game of golf being so mental, you know, a lot of things like that can come into play. So putting that pressure on trying to crushing souls out there trying to, you know, it's 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 a long hope from here with four strokes to go playing against. I think it's really doable. There's so many birdies on the back and it's so easy to miss them all. It is. But it is maybe, but when maybe the whole 17 is play, hard to miss, but there's all kinds of stuff that can happen katrina leaves that one short i know that i can pick at least one stroke up on katrina if i can hit this putt madison here with her star gator puts it a little bit too wide and hits that tree she's going to be knocked down short and has a long jumper bjerkis with a nice approach for a birdie putt. Katrina from pretty far for her birdie. She'll have to try to tap that in for par. Yeah, and that wasn't quite as high as she wanted. She actually kind of left herself right about circle's edge. Uh, uh, it just dropped out of the sky. And, you know, it's it's definitely a tester at this point. Paige Birkis from just outside the circle. For the birdie with a headwind. It catches. Yes, it does. High and right is good enough today. And she gives a fist bump and happily smiles on her way up there. She is loving this putt. Katrina misses the birdie putt. Yeah, a little bit high there for Katrina. So I have the chance to pick up two strokes if I hit this. Which you do. Cha-ching. Yeah, I was very excited about that, you know, with still eight holes to play. Two-stroke swing is is, uh, pretty crucial at this point. Madison trying to figure out this wind. It's gusting and then dropping and then gusting again right in her face. 
Cashes it in. She's got a great putt for the wind. Yeah, she puts a lot of spin on these Colts uh, that she puts with, and I know they're overstable putters. She makes them fly pretty straight, so that just kind of goes to show you how much spin she's putting on it. And uh, it's like a rocket straight at the chains. Katrina makes that putt into a slight headwind, and we are on to hole 11. And now only two strokes are separating our leaders. And Paige with the rare eagle, maybe one of the only in the field this this uh, this tournament. And uh, the competition's heating up. We're on to hole 11. This is 302 feet, probably played more like 350 with a long uphill left to right. Low branches off the tee makes players try to throw out and wide of them to make the hole even a little bit longer. A couple bunkers up on the left side, giving a little bit of trouble on approaches, but most players are really trying to get a putt from circle two. Yeah, so after the eagle, I'll take the box, and I'm trying to just continue on the birdie train. All these holes, like you said, uh, we have the potential to birdie, and with Katrina behind me, on the box and up two strokes on me. I'm trying to put the pressure on. I get it close to circle's edge, but uh, you know, on a 300 and something foot hole, we're trying to get it a little closer if we can. Oh yeah, wide. <laughs> you gotta throw wide cousin. enough to, yeah. yeah. <laughs> gotta go throw wide enough to get outside those trees, but that does make the hole play more like 400 feet. It totally does. Katrina here with her new M4. She just started bagging this thing last week. Um, you know, tournament is almost over and she's relying on it here. So that just kind of goes to show you how much confidence she has in this disc and her angle. And uh, she, she gets up there close to the circle. Madison with her star strike little bit too wide Paige yells to join her over there on the left side it's not bad like you can see but it isn't a birdie and uh you know with like I said with eight holes to play you, you need every stroke you can get especially these two battling for third place with you <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming for you ladies <laughs> little do they know Katrina for birdie trying to extend her lead off the off the top band life band life so do you feel like when we're speaking of you know putting the pressure on by hitting the bigger putt or throwing the bigger drive do you feel like that transitions into second card to lead card like that we're checking your scores and seeing okay sarah's getting birdie 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 do you think that that translates into madison and Paige's game plan if they're if they're looking for yeah. sure yeah i mean i think you know that's one of the choices you have to make whether you want to stick to your game plan and just do what you do or are you going to try to you know play the play the field a bit so no no birdies there in fact there were actually no birdies uh from the ladies on this uh that hole for the entire tournament really so yeah i guess it was a little too far or wow, a little bit I of struggle there on the on the shape moving on to hole 12 321 feet down a hill navigating from left to right there is a little bit of uh, ob green on the left side not really in play the hardest part is getting tucked up into this into this green it's a tough backhand it's really meant for a sidearm but i've seen some backhand throwers get it all the way in there and this hole in particular the wind was ripping I completely changed my game plan. I did not even practice this shot. I'm throwing a felon on a severe Anheuser angle, knowing that it'll Heiser back at the end, but this headwind turned it over right into the gap, and I was very happy with that shot. Paige now with another sidearm, second one of the round, newly implemented shot into her game. She's throwing her Ballista Pro here, and she's, you can tell she kind of put her hands up like, well, pretty good. <laughs> yeah, you know, it went the general direction. I mean, I don't know that she pinned the shot, but she's down. She's down there for a look. Can't you can't uh, you can't hate on that. That's yeah. great that she's doing that off the tee. I love yeah, it. Yeah, it's nice. Katrina here with her roller, 
she felt a break in the wind and decided to throw her aggressive typical play um, as you saw that blue fairway in her hand she was debating throwing an air shot but when she felt that break in the wind she decided to go for the driver i asked her about the wind That's a- pro move there yeah it's tough to make that decision if you don't if you're not prepared to know that it could change at any second and that you also need to do your routine and throw the shot before it changes again madison here with her colt almost makes it it looks like a great release just a little bit low fun through that gap yeah here you are with a putt as well yeah this is very necessary to hit this i know katrina's roller is under the basket and you know i'm still behind i know if i don't hit that she's getting a stroke on me and cashes uh, it in yeah little hesitation in her stroke but she puts it in for the birdie getting back one of those that she gave away two holes ago putting the margin at three yes madison will tap in a little bit reluctant there i think she's kind of dwelling on that miss um it's a beautiful miss though she yeah she peered those trees and it looked like it was going in for quite a while it did absolutely sometimes it's tough to get it's easy to get down on yourself out there so katrina extends her lead to she's at 14 i'm at 11 so she's up by three we have third place right now by 10, but we don't know what Hokum's at unless we're checking Udis live. <laughs> <laughs> Hole 13 is 327 feet. Down a hill, it's either a wide hyzer with the backhand, maybe a power shot with an overstable fairway, um, or you can go up the left side with the low trees hanging down to kind of block anything higher. And then there's an OB green and some bunkers behind the basket if your disc gets away with you, gets away from you a little bit. Katrina with her D2 as Paige is trying to choose her disc. <laughs> uh, she throws it nice and wide, but it's moving quickly, gets a skip, and that tree kind of makes it sit. She even jokingly said, you know, that's the closest I've been. And we kind of had some T-pad chatter about it maybe being the hardest par three to land in the bullseye. I don't know if I saw one in either of the two years that I've played here. I did see, I think I saw two. Into the bullseye. Yeah, I, I got wow. one and then Erica put it real close to this. Nice. I saw your sidearm play on it and I really loved watching that. It's It's just such a fine line of throwing it too wide and it's swooping like Pages is doing right here and throwing it a little bit lower so that it doesn't swoop, but then it hits the grass and doesn't get the skip. It's And that headwind is exaggerating every angle yeah. to the point where it makes it way more difficult to control. As you can see, Madison kind of letting that go quite a bit wider, a little t- way too flat. Now she's got a tricky approach down the hill. Yeah, even with that Star Destroyer, it still turned it over. That headwind is no joke. She's going to want that to sit. She was running it, though. She... she you have to f- assume she's looking at scores if she's running a putt like that on hole 13 of the final round. It's a Sunday run day. Sunday run day. Paige is running this a little bit too aggressive there. She tries to barely cut it around the tree and ends up hitting it. Katrina for birdie. Little right. Hits a couple chains on the right side. I have the chance to get one back here. But I kind of miss it on the right side. This one I'm uh, not very excited about. <laughs> you it's know never it, really fun to miss. No, it's not. And Madison for bogey. She connects. Paige is tripping over her bag, making her way down to her putter. <laughs> <laughs> Little headwind putt. No problem. So no birdies here on the field, um, at least in the lead card. But we did see um, Erica Stinchcomb. I, wa- I get to watch her get a nice birdie here along with Edie Hurd. Nice. That's awesome. 
Dee Dee is 15 years old. She's an up and comer. She actually still hasn't accepted cash, but she's played quite a few of the bigger events this year. Uh, she told me she's going to go try to play in Worlds this year and then come back on the tour next year as a pro. Yeah, look for her to make big moves here in the future, real near future. So the cat is still in the lead by three, and Bjerkis takes one on Madison to get her spot in, herself into that third spot. And we are on to hole 14, 263 feet playing slightly uphill down a wooded gap is the most, yeah, it's the most obvious route, but there is a hyzer for the righty backhands who want to push a really strong hyzer that skips back in. And there is also a hyzer for the lefty or sidearm route. So this line does work. Cat going with the hyzer. But it just takes so much precision. Like, you have to really execute that shot well, and Katrina does. Beautiful shot with her D2. I'm trying to go the, on the straight gap, and I kind of late release it, so I'm going to hit a tree on the right side and have a long attempt for a two. I think this is a case of just uh, wanting it too bad. That release there? Yeah. Uh, like a trying so, too hard? Maybe so. I was just trying to get as close as I possibly could instead of just hitting the gap and then going for the putt. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Madison here with her star wraith. Puts a little bit of a turn on it and keeps it high so that when it starts to stall out it is still gaining distance and she's going to be outside the circle oh and you have a putt i mean a very long putt what is that 150 <laughs> yeah <laughs> maybe like uh yeah 100 or so um, but i know cat's under it and i have to try absolutely but she gets another stroke and we are back to a four stroke um difference here going into hole 15 Paige and Madison's battle, though, is, you know, still very present. It is absolutely heating up. We're, a bull. We're all hovering right about that even mark. Yeah. Trying to get as far under par as we can on these last few holes, which are all pretty birdieable. But also boogieable. We very boogieable. We have an island hole coming up. And, uh, you know, there could be two stroke swings easily. So it's kind of cool about this course is that, you know, you're – you're never out of it until it's over. Got to watch Rebecca Cox make a really nice birdie putt. She uh, she did a full layout from about 60 feet nice. and jammed it on that on awesome. that hole. It was great to watch. So Kat grabs another four stroke four strokes separate our leaders, and it is time for hole 15. Hole 15 is a uh, tricky hole. With the mostly mostly dependent upon the green, so we're shooting downhill. It's generally going to be a turnover for most of the backhand throwers. It's also really great for a sidearm, but the real trouble is this green. The stump there makes this hole way higher than a normal elevated basket, and it it is a rollaway potential on every side of it. We also have the bunkers deep and a green deep as well. Katrina calling for her M4 to drop, and it does, but she is going to be on the right side. And honestly, if you're outside of 25 feet, it's hard to contemplate actually running the putt. Oh, we just hit the cameraman. I did. I did. I thought he saw it coming. He, I mean, from my perspective, he was looking right at it. I didn't even actually yell for, and I... Hope he's okay. <laughs> Paige trying to turn that sh that disc over, but it does not. That tailwind keeps it straight, and she will be in the bunker. Yeah, that's her fundraiser disc, the Lucidex Getaway, and it just it does have a little bit of stability at the end and just hyzers out. But Madison with a beautiful sidearm getting it inside the circle, and she'll have a decision yeah. to make. Yeah, she will. She got it yesterday. I have to assume getting that close this late, she's got to run it, as do I. Just don't give it quite enough. Good height, but didn't commit to it. 
Madison here with the flag whipping. Whoo! <laughs> High, but still in. What a what a putt! I think I saw most of the players I played with laying that up from yes, that distance. Definitely. But Madison wants to keep her position. Great comebacker. Thank you. Wow. Yeah, tailwind. Tailwind elevated putts for me, I just feel like just put more than you think on it. Just put it. And like the tailwind will just drop it. Katrina didn't even want to try. Lays it up. Super veteran play. Yeah, the luxury the of point? the layup at that point. Yeah, what's the point of going for it? Four strokes with three holes to play. Definitely gives her that advantage. Yeah, that just goes to show you how confident she feels in this next hole. It is an island hole. Like I said, there could be a two-stroke swing easily. But, you know, with three, three strokes, or with four strokes, she didn't even want to try. So, you know, she still has a, a significant lead going into this. And Madison jumping up with that little birdie to move ahead of Bierkus for that third spot. Hole 16, the island hole, the dreaded island hole, surrounded by the keen wall. You can play it either straight at the basket. It's about 285 feet, or you can play the hyzer around the large tree on the right with that, that crosswind um, kind of pushing you back into the island. Up first Madison. is Madison with that birdie. She throws a great sidearm chip shot right onto the green. Cat with the hyzer route. No surprise there. Parks it. Almost. Is this best bullseye? Bullseye. I would say it's probably the bullseye. But with the elevated basket and the wind, you know, sometimes those are harder. They're always harder. Pretty much convinced. Yeah. I'm throwing my Marshall here, and I just uh, kind of overpowered it, went off the walls in the back, and I will be proceeding to the drop zone, throwing three. Paige makes a correction off of mine, also with a putter here, but this was a judge. Um, she just put a nice amount of power on it and it just drifted down right in front of the basket from about 60 to save her par good looking putt madison for birdie raging headwind a little bit left definitely a little missing a little confidence there on that putt so hard to commit to definitely. the headwind putts Leaving herself the long look. Got to go for it again. And we'll tap out the double bogey. Madison for par. There it is. This was kind of a pivotal hole for you. Yeah, it was. As soon as I teed off, I and I had that thought in my head on the tee pad, I... You know, as soon as I teed off and saw it OB and then, you know, knowing she was on the green under the basket, you know, that was kind of the moment. If I would have made that drop zone putt, um, you know, maybe it could have been a little bit more tension mm -hmm. um, going into these last two. But giving her three on this hole, you know, now it's going to need a miracle going into hole 17. Yes. So with that, Birdie Cat extends her lead to six, seven, excuse me. And Bjerkus tying it up with Madison for that third spot as we go into hole 17. Playing as a par four, 465 feet. It's a flexing distance shot out of the gap up to the center. And then depending on how much time, how much distance you got off the tee, the upside will be anywhere from 150 to 200 feet, tucked up around a couple of trees with a slight slope. This is one of the easiest holes 
on the course, and we expect nearly every leader to get this one. Katrina here with her D2. She has been throwing roller on it in previous rounds, uh, but this wind is quite a bit up, so she's going with a stable driver. As you can see, it's hyzering out, and she will be almost right in line with the basket, but like 150 feet to the left. Wind is pushing from left to right here. So kind of pushing everything. It's also making pushing everything kind of down if it gets that angle. So it's kind of tough to get some distance off this tee. It always it never looks like it goes very far. Yeah. Madison here with her star wraith. She's looking for that to get up. With her signature twirl at the end. <laughs> it's a little bit low. Like you said, though, she still has a great look at a birdie. Just a little bit longer of an upshot. And I assume this is an eagle run. Yeah, I'm trying to get it as close as I possibly can. I'm thinking in my head, if I go eagle, eagle, maybe there's a chance. But even that is quite a stretch. So, but you're not giving up hope. No, no way. It's never over till it's over. I've, I've won and lost tournaments on the last putt countless times. Even some against you. <laughs> you know? I know the feeling. Madison with a textbook approach. Cat also going with a sidearm. Following suit right next to the pin. And here I'm going with a chip sidearm as well, trying to run it. I'm about 100 feet away, I would say. Whew, almost looked like you put it in. Chain height, um, a little bit too much hyzer. But yeah, good good run. I felt, I felt like it was a respectable run. Paige going for a jump putt here. Looked great. Yeah. It looked great. Wind is just whipping, making everything just a little bit harder. Oh. Yeah. That wind just pushed it out. Yeah. A tiny bit high, but, you know, those are one of those that sometimes you think are spit outs. But I could have hit it a little bit lower, but just... You know, dagger to the heart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Madison tapping out with the three there. That is going to help her in her quest for third place. She definitely takes the lead against Bjerkis there. That putt was pretty important for Bjerkis. And Kat grabs a another stroke on the field. Extending her lead to eight, going into the final hole. Madison is up on Paige Bjerkis by one, and Paige Pierce is on an island by herself of <laughs> awesomeness. I like islands. Yeah. Hole 18, the final hole, 567 feet, par four. Players are going to want to get their first shot out into the open, avoiding the pit of despair. And then their second shot, they're gonna either lay up to the right or short of the green, or they're gonna go all the way for all the way for the green, trying to avoid these kind of random bunkers. I believe Kat will probably be playing some conservative golf here. Yeah. Sometimes I feel like they should just go for everything. <laughs> I do too. You know, she's still getting a good amount of distance off that though. She's getting close to that 200 foot stake. Um, that's kind of where you're, where the sweet spot is. I feel like in the bottom of that bowl, so you have flat footing, and you know you got that distance marker to kind of solidify that question of how far am I? <laughs> Madison with a beautiful turnover into a, a headwind. Paige also with the turnover, getting a little bit too much turn, but thankfully gets a cut roll out into the open. That right side is out of bounds. This is my Biofusion Defender here. Kind of fun to kind of let out a little frustration there. Yeah, I was, yeah. You know, it's like no matter how far I throw it, there's never going to be a putt on it. Um, yeah. I'm just trying to make my upshot as short as possible. So, yeah, also maybe just trying to put on a show a little bit. and. Yeah, you guys had a nice gallery out there. Yeah, we did. It was great. They actually let all the mothers in for free for Mother's Day and uh, – yeah, we had quite a bit of families out there watching disc golf, and it was really cool. 
Cat puts a great shot up by the pin to finish with a birdie. She makes that putt in champion style. Madison here with her rhino. Looks like she's trying to just put a shot safely on this side of the sand pit and then go for a very short approach. And that will protect her position in third place with Paige Bierkus and I right on her heels. Great shot. Little tester to finish off. Madison again with her rhino. She's got to get this par to secure third place. You guys got it surrounded. A disappointing end to a great tournament, though. Yeah, yeah, it was a good tournament. Katrina played spectacular, so, you know, it's hard to be too upset. And, you know, watching her shoot a 10 under yesterday and then today, that putt just puts her to 5 under. Remarkable golf by a great competitor and, uh, you know, a well-deserved victory. Yeah, she played pretty flawless all weekend. That 10-22 rated second round, shooting the course record. Congratulations, Katrina Allen, on a minus 18 and the now SFO San Francisco Open champion. Thank you guys for joining us. Thank you, Paige, for doing the commentary. And thank you to Absolute Extracts, Innova Champion Discs. Thanks for tuning in to Par Save Productions. And thank you for supporting the Pro Tour. We'll see you next time with the next Pro Tour event is the Portland Open in a couple of weeks. We will see you soon. Make sure you subscribe so you're alerted when the Portland Open happens and the FPO coverage drops.